I'd like to introduce to you that person who in 1988 did not know who she was. And a person that today is not only aware of who she is, but also her purpose in this life. I would also like to introduce a person who changed my life forever. Kathy O'Brien, thank you. I'd like to thank you for coming out here this evening to arm yourselves with comprehensive understanding of mind control because knowledge is our only defense against mind control. Knowledge is our only defense against it which is exactly why it's being, in, being suppressed under the 1947 National Security Act. There's a small handful of criminals that are in control of our government and in control of our country that are in control of our information and they're suppressing pertinent facts such as mind control and hiding under the National Security Act. That's national security that's threatening the security of our nation when it allows for crimes against humanity like tortures to continue when it allows for mass mind control mechanisms to go into place through social engineering that keeps us all warring with each other and not really understanding exactly what it is that's going on in our world. We all formulate our thoughts, our opinions, and ultimately our actions based on what we know. And when our knowledge base is altered, we're left to superstition, conjecture, and ultimately fear. And fear is a strong basis for mind control, whether it's a kind of mind control that is the mass mind control over a whole society, or if it's the kind of absolute robotic mind control that I experienced under MK Ultra on a White House Pentagon level. I feel very fortunate to have recovered from my mind control victimization and to have a clear view of what's actually going on behind the scenes of what Adolf Hitler and George Bush termed a new world order. It makes perfect sense to me what I'm seeing in society today. And the truth that set me free from the absolute mind control that I experienced can also set you free from any kind of fear that you're experiencing through what is happening in our society and in our world today. It can also free you from any kind of trauma that you've experienced in the past, it can also free you from information control that has left you wondering what in the world is going on today. I'd like to provide a, a comprehensive view of exactly what mind control entails based on uh, my victimization in mind control and also my recovery from it because the mind expanding abilities that I gained in my recovery process are abilities that each and every one of you would be able to use to gain a better understanding to know what's going on in the world and empower you to make a positive difference in your own lives and in your own walk of life in your own society your own family and affect those that you love as well in 1957, I was born into a multi-generational incest-based family. My father had been sexually abused. His mother was a prostitute. 
My mother had been sexually abused, and her father was military intelligence and ran a blue Masonic lodge. Um, I'm certainly not going to be suggesting that all Masons are bad, just because there are many who have an ulterior agenda that is formulated on abuse. And anyone that I name is not to suggest that any particular group is responsible for what's going on in the world today. It's just not that simple. There's good and bad in everything, and it weaves um, in and out of society. And in, in my situation, I thought that the whole world was involved in abuse. And as a very young child, I had hoped that there was some place in the world where people didn't abuse their children. I thought that perhaps that could actually happen because that's what I, had, what I felt in, in my heart. And yet, with my whole environment saturated and my view was narrow to my own environment, I lost hope that there was a place where people didn't abuse each other. The sexual abuse that I endured as a child began at a very early age. And it was before I could, before I could actually think to understand that my father's sexual abuse was bad. I couldn't judge morally what he was doing was wrong in any way whatsoever. But I did endure the pain and suffocation of his abuse just the same. And my body automatically responded to that pain and to that suffocation by developing a disorder which is known as dissociative identity disorder. This disorder was formally termed multiple personality disorder. And the um, International Society for the Study of Dissociation has finally come out with better information on how to recover from trauma and have redefined the disorder as dissociative identity disorder because multiple personality disorder is a misnomer. I didn't develop multiple personalities. I had one personality that was just totally shattered from the abuse. When trauma occurs that is too horrible to comprehend, the mind compartmentalizes that abuse. So by compartmentalizing off that abuse, the rest of the mind can function normally as though nothing had happened. This is now professionally defined, this disorder is, as the mind's sane defense to trauma too horrible to comprehend. It's not something that as a very, very young child I thought to develop and, and used as a, as a psychological protective mechanism. Instead, it's what my brain automatically did in order to deal with the extensive abuse that I was experiencing. My father may not have been aware of the effects on my brain that his abuse was causing. Not until much later, when his sexual abuse used as a, expanded into, um, into child pornography. He was supplementing the family income with proceeds from child pornography he was making of me. And this, this child pornography was being sold through the local Michigan Mafia child pornography ring. Well, back then, this was Bef just right around the um, age of six, so this was like now into the early 60s. And they, the, a local politician was actually sanctioning this child pornography ring in order to target children like myself for MK Ultra Mind Control. Because it was well known that any child that was so abused to be used in child pornography would be suffering from this dissociative disorder. This, dis this disorder is a, um, 
a prime basis for mind control, as had been learned through the Hitler Himmler studies on multi-generationally abused children. In the early 60s, Project Paperclip was in full swing. The Nazi and fascist scientists had been imported into the United States, were put into key positions, and information was gleaned from them on what Adolf Hitler was using as mind control in Nazi Germany. This project paperclip that brought the information in was being taken in by the CIA and a criminal faction of the government that was very much interested in how to control the mind of individuals as well as control um, the minds of a population more so than had occurred in Nazi Germany because those people had actually um, broke free of the Hitler plan to be with the war, but yet the war was so traumatizing that it still left them unable to think for themselves to the point where they became socially engineered. So there's a great deal inf of information that was being brought into this country regarding the effects of trauma on the human mind. A local politician that was sanctioning this um, child pornography ring was associated with my grandfather's Blue Masonic Lodge. A Blue Masonic Lodge oftentimes has key individuals within a community who are involved in politics or um, in this particular case it was quite a, a criminal faction of, of politics and, and businessmen, um, police officers and just other, other local politicians as well. The, when this one particular politician came to my father and told him he could receive immunity from prosecution if he would sell me into MK Ultra mind control, my father was thrilled. He, he agreed to sell me into the project and was trained in how to raise me for MK Ultra. My father was immediately flown to Boston, Massachusetts, where he was given the information on the language of the subconscious or how to speak to the subconscious mind. And that's NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming. Because by that time, the abuse was extensive to the point where when um, extreme trauma occurs in certain situations such as like when a person is in an automobile accident, you may have heard stories where they had a near-death experience and it was as though their spirit were, were above everything and looking down on the event um, from, from a, a high up position. It's as though the spirit takes flight from the body in order to escape the pain and and there's like an overview of it. And within that overview, very oftentimes after people survive, they can recall very key events that have occurred around their accident, such as other license plate numbers, or maybe even something more on a spiritual level where they feel love energy of someone who is, who is praying. There are many different aspects that people come back and report from this, this higher up view of when an extreme near death trauma has occurred to the point where their, their spirit had, had left and then, then reattaches. And when it comes back, there is that, that photographic memory surrounding the trauma as well. These are natural phenomena that are associated with the human body that was well known by those who were studying MK Ultra mind control. They knew that even though I was compartmentalizing memory of my abuse so that the rest of my mind could function normally as though nothing had happened. For example, when my father would sexually abuse me, I wouldn't think of it was when I was in other situations. I couldn't think to bring it to mind. And they thought, what better place to store government secrets than in the, the brain of someone who can't think to bring that information to mind? 
And yet at the same time, because of the extreme trauma that was going on, my brain was also photogra photographically recording events surrounding that trauma. So within that compartment of my brain was also a photographic memory. And the government was very much interested in that aspect of the phenomena of the effects of trauma on the human mind. They were also interested in what Mark has mentioned about the, when a person develops 44 times visual acuity. And I developed that as well. It's as though a person gets eyes in the back of their head. You know, my eyes were wide open. You could see whites all the way around my eyes, just so traumatized. And as though I was looking to see the trauma before it came again, before it happened again. And it's kind of like developing eyes in the back of the head. The senses become extremely super heightened, like the way um, perhaps a blind person would develop a better hearing. And since I was not able to consciously comprehend what was happening to me, my senses were increasing dramatically. My hearing was very acute as well. And I could hear things that were going on in the, in the next room because the hearing is heightened to that extent. It's a defense mechanism that automatically goes on in, in, the, in the brain when, when trauma is occurring. Additionally, this kind of sensing goes into an area that gives a like a psychic per perception, I, and I hesitate to use the word psychic because it's, it, it, it's been misused in, in many, many ways. But nevertheless, it, it, the, the hearing is so acute and the visual is so acute and the senses are so heightened that there becomes a stronger knowing. And the government did numerous studies into the psychic abilities of people who were also abused. These all were adding up into reasons why there was a faction of our government that was looking into what the Hitler-Himmler studies had revealed. <coughs> Additionally, when a per person compartmentalizes memory, after so many compartments develop, there's no continuity of thought. There's no memory of what happened before so when a person's out and around and, and they don't think to bring to mind the abuse, they don't know what time has passed. So after a while, there's no comprehension of time. There's no ability to consciously comprehend what's going on. And there's no continuity of thought. Without this kind of a conscious awareness, it leaves the subconscious mind open to be led. A person becomes highly suggestible. Any person who's experienced sexual abuse, especially prior to the age of five, or physical abuse, or even psychological abuse prior to the age of five, would develop this kind of a heightened suggestibility. It's well known that when trauma occurs, people become highly suggestible. When traumas occur in our society, such as what happened 9-1-1, this, many people in this country, ptsd they develop post-traumatic stress disorder. This PTSD left people unable to think clearly for themselves. They were very fearful. They were very emotionally distraught over what had happened. And when they're not able to think clearly for themselves, they're more easily led. So when they're told what to do by the television while those horrible images are played over and over and over again, they become compliant, they become apathetical, and they become so easily led that America began to lose some of its strength to the point where the criminals that have been in control now for numerous generations took a significant step forward in their control. But just like they misjudged with me, they never considered the strength of the human spirit, they never considered what 
what happened when people cared about each other, when love entered the equation. And that has caused people to stand and a lot more people are awake and aware and it's making a profound difference. It's certainly the cause, ultimately, of my recovery. But they weren't aware of any of those aspects back then. All they knew was exact, exact scientific formula for exactly how to control someone and what happens to the brain when a person is severely traumatized. They knew that if a person didn't have any continuity of thought or any awareness of time, that they would have extreme physical endurance. Because when um, a, a person is, does something real exhausting and real extensive for a while, completely forgets about it, the brain doesn't signal the body to be tired, and it's as fresh as it was before it, it, it had gone through um, all the strenuous activity leading up to it. This became a very strong interest for the government in um, creating what we now know as special forces or the military special forces that have seemingly superhuman strength and superhuman endurance, superhuman vision and an ability to carry on and carry out orders that are extraordinary. This was also an opportunity for the government to store secrets within a mind of someone like that while at the same time having a photographic memory to know exactly how to carry out the, the various orders. When they began meddling in the, the subconscious mind, our subconscious mind is the part that controls our, our breathing, it controls our blood flow, it controls uh, numerous body functions. And because of that, it, a person could actually take a bullet and not bleed, not recognize or acknowledge the pain, have it compartmentalized and go on as though nothing had happened. And by not acknowledging it, the, the, um, the pain doesn't slow them down, the endurance continues, the bleeding is stopped, and they're able to continue to do whatever it is they're, they're programmed to to carry out. This is pertinent information about what our brains are capable of doing. Just because the criminals that are in control of our country right now and in control of our information who have suppressed these pertinent facts from the uh, American Psychiatric and Psychological Associations and from the mental health community as a whole but most of all, they've suppressed this information from you and I because we have a right to this information. We have a right to know that our brain is capable of these kind of functions because if someone can reach in and control the subconscious mind using the language of the subconscious and trauma, what can we do with the realization that we have that capacity within our own brains? and have it spirit driven and driven by our own choices, driven by love, driven by compassion. It makes a, a powerful difference in our own ability to heal ourselves when we can regulate our own blood flow, when we can regulate our own breathing. And if we can affect those kinds of aspects of our body, we can also regulate um, other aspects of healing that are essential to um, our, our, our own living, especially these days, because more and more we're seeing where our medical system is significantly eroded by, for financial reasons, by insurance, by um, doctors who are controlled by drug, the drug companies. And also because we're so financially devastated, it's very difficult to be able to just aff simply afford uh, medical treatment. So to know that we have these capacities in our brain is essential today now more than ever. And it's really a very positive aspect of learning about mind control, about learning to, the, how our brains can actually function. But Back in the early 60s when I was growing up and the government was looking into these mind control abilities 
And my father was flown to Boston because the Catholics had also long since learned the effects of trauma on the human mind through the Spanish Inquisition, through the Crusades. They knew how the mind responds to significant trauma. Combining the Hitler-Himmler research with what the Catholics had learned and taking it into a new level with through the, the CIA and through the technological advancements that were beginning to come forth in society. We had, we had television then, which was having a strong impact on people and gave them the ability to uh, implement mass mind control far stronger than Adolf Hitler ever could do. And also through the music, because music was, was coming on so strong then, and it was learned how harmonics affect the brain function as well. It's like when you hear a, um, a specific song, and you can remember something that had happened the first time you ever heard that song. I've heard people say that quite often. Well, I remember what happened. Um, remember when we were in the car and the song came on, and remember how we fell in love to that song? I mean, people remember certain events with, with music because the harmonic vibration that affects the um, neuron pathways of the brain and allows for the song lyrics to go in deeper. So harmonics were coming on real strong as well. My father's role, since he was only, um, he only had a sixth grade education and he earned his living as a worm digger up to that point um, and was supplementing the family income with child pornography. He wasn't extremely bright, and yet he had enough intelligence to be able to understand what they were telling him about the way the subconscious mind responds and reacts. Plus, all he had to do was carry out specific orders to make sure that I was in certain places at certain times according to the government specifications. The local politician that had approached my father on um, selling me into MK Ultra Mind Control was Gerald Ford. This is the same Gerald Ford who went on to become the unelected president of the United States. Gerald Ford's political career escalated significantly, and since I was in MK Ultra Mind Control. Um, with, with under, predominantly under Ford back in those days, then my victimization rose proportionately until I was used on a White House Pentagon level during the Reagan-Bush administration. But nevertheless, Gerald Ford was uh, very much instrumental in bringing mind control not only on an individual basis, but also on a mass mind control level as well, particularly by the time um, he was in office of, of president. Consider that Gerald Ford's presidential cabinet included George Bush as head of the CIA, Donald Rumsfeld as Secretary of Defense, Dick Cheney as Secretary of State, Jack Valenny as his press secretary. Of course, many of you know Jack Valenny as head of the Motion Picture Association of America. And he, along with a small handful of corporations, control our medias and decide what information we can be privy to through the television, and through the arts. So Jack Valenny's influence was also very strong back in the Ford administration. I name these names so that you can understand who these people are because they're the same ones over and over and over again. And people have forgotten to connect the dots, to realize who these people are. When we get new people in office, consider where did they come from? Who are they? What did they do? 
like our new attorney general. Our new attorney general was an attorney for Enron. Our new head of the CIA has said that no one is allowed, he has mandated already that no one is allowed to say anything against this administration, the Bush administration that's in right now, or to go against their orders. The new attorney general, had, the first thing he did was denounce the Geneva Convention believing that in these times we should allow for torture. It's not like they have it all along, it's just they used to do it more secretly before it came out recently. It's important that we consider that we've got the same people in place and it's just a small handful of criminals and it's absolutely inexcusable that we continue to leave them in power. After my father came back from Boston, Massachusetts, I was subjected to extensive systematic abuses. The sexual abuse that I had endured was extending into ritual abuse and more tortures. The ritual abuse that I experienced within our local Catholic Church was very deliberate for the purposes of mind control. It's not to say that all Catholics are bad. There's some very, very good concerned Catholics who are as outraged as you and I are that that kind of abuse is going on in the church. They're as outraged as we became when we began to learn about this Boston connection. When we started hearing about the child abuse that was emanating out of Boston. It wasn't just child abuse, although that's absolutely horrific enough. It was a very systematic form of mind control, very much a part of MKUltra. I've been talking about that Boston connection for over a decade. And I'm so glad to see that it's finally coming to light. And yet the most key part of what's actually going on has been left out of the equation once again. Mind control, understanding mind control, gives us a comprehension of what we're actually seeing and gives us an understanding of numerous aspects of not only what we're seeing in society, but on a global scale as well. Because it's the common thread that ties everything together. It's that last piece of the puzzle that pulls the whole picture into focus where we can actually fully understand what it is we're seeing. Because once we understand it, we no longer have to fear it. We're no longer left to superstition. We're no longer left to fearing what, what's coming next, what's coming next. Instead, we know. We know exactly what's going on and we can think beyond what we're being told. We can think beyond what the media allows us to know. We can expand our thinking and learn to stand strong with a strength of spirit and soul conviction to make a positive difference in our own lives and in our own little areas of society. And ultimately that will expand further and further and further. But it begins with awareness. The abuse that I was enduring under MK Ultra Mind Control was so extensive that I lost all my awareness. I lost my ability to reason. I lost my ability to question anything. More and more I could only do exactly what I was told to do with no ability to hope anymore that there was some place Not only did, was my whole environment saturated with this abuse, but I couldn't even think anymore to hope that there was some place where people were kind. I began losing my ability to think 
from about the age of six on, and it was quite um, a, an extensive progression over um, the next several years. This included going to the governor's mansion in Mackinac Island, Michigan. At that time, George Romney was the governor of Michigan, and he was very much interested in taking a powerful form of mind control gleaned from the Catholics, taken from the Catholics, taken from the, the CIA and the Hitler-Himmler research, and, and also into the um, technological advancements, and put it into his Mormon church. George Romney was very active and very high up in the Mormon church, and they could foresee that as a strong opportunity for um, being able to lead people by in, in a religious way. People are, are easily led by a religion because they, they, they do want to do what God tells them to do, but the religion that they're being taught is outside themselves, when in fact the spirituality and relationship with God is within. And yet, religion can pull people down a, a path outside themselves where they're more easily led and controlled, particularly when systematic abuses are going on and MK Ultra mind control and technological advances are being um, used as strong as they were in the Mormon church. That's not to say all Mormons are bad. There's, uh, there's quite a few Mormons who are who are standing up once they're able to think for themselves to make a positive difference and stop the abuse in their churches as well. But that's a little bit slower. The, um, the devastation wreaked on, on, on people within the Mormon church is extensive and it's very much like the abuses that go on in uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses church that has just come into light where um, their mind control is so prevalent there as well. And every time where the mind control is prevalent, there's always abuse, and it's usually sexual abuse of the children. We need to become aware of how people are being led this way. When we have a politics that have no separation of church and state, it allows for them to um, dictate or to provide the information through the churches on, on a political agenda as well. And it's a, a very dangerous and a very powerful combination, yet nevertheless is all moving towards the same goal of a mind control of the masses. In Mackinac Island, Michigan, um, I also heard George Romney talk about what is now known as global education, where bringing the, um, a, a form of mind control into the education system and altering the history and also pumping information into the children's head at, at a rate to where they, have, they lose their ability to discern and to creatively utilize the information, but nevertheless it's just being pumped into their head, especially with the onset of computerization and harmonics coming through the headphones while they're um, sitting at some of those computers. The computers were also deliberately uh, designed to alter the history that they were being taught because it was believed that to control the future all they needed to do was control the history. Again, alter that knowledge base so that when they do formulate any thought or action it's based on something that's totally false or, um, or is something that's lacking key elements such as mind control such as what really went on in Nazi Germany. Without these key elements in their history, the, the children were um, being socially engineered into another direction. So we've got several generations now where this kind of social engineering has perpetuated through the school systems. Fortunately, there are a number of people who became aware of this, particularly when Bill Bennett was the Secretary of Education and had said that every child in this country should be taught by a Jesuit. 
The Jesuits are the intelligence arm of the Vatican and was very much corrupted into bringing what Adolf Hitler said was a way to mass mind control uh, generations. It was Adolf Hitler who said that if there were any free thinkers left in society, he wasn't concerned because he had control of the minds of the children through the education system. That was something that I heard Bill Bennett quote himself in the application of, of um, the global education into the system. My um, experience in MK Ultra, once it was on a White House Pentagon level, included working under Bill Bennett, which was how I was privy to that information as well. And I had seen it as a young child in Mackinac Island, Michigan, when it was first being implemented by George Romney. Michigan had soared to the top of the education system back in those days, and now, um, of course, we've, we've had the global education just, just permeate through, um, through our schools. But fortunately, the um, people have, have become more aware and are waking up and there's more and more homeschooling that's going on, which is a, very much a solution. But it's also important that uh, people are re-educated to what history actually is and people like Wendy who are, are making those kind of efforts in their, in their own areas of life who are aware of it are what is key to undoing this tangled mess of social engineering and mass mind control that has permeated our society and brought us to this point that we're looking at today. My owner in MK Ultra Mind Control was U.S. Senator Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd has been in, in office longer than I've been alive. And he's still in office today. He's um, been head of our Senate Appropriations Committee, which means that he decides how money is going to be spent, how it's going to be delegated, and he has made sure that more and more states' rights are lost in favor of federal intervention. And that was how global education was brought into the school systems as states' rights were overridden. Um, the last holdout for states' rights in the education system was in the state of Alabama under Governor Fob James, who was who said that the federal government has no business meddling in the minds of our children and he turned down all federal funding in order to maintain freedom of thought, in order to maintain uh, a base of truth in the history in the school systems and yet I uh, also watched the progress where the federal government came in and, and took away the state's rights and just simply overrode it. Based on what? Senator Byrd is very learned in the Constitution. I think he knows more about the Constitution than anybody I've ever encountered, that's for sure. And he can quote the Constitution much the way that a Satanist can quote the Bible where they can take the information or they can take the words and twist them around and use semantics and, and switch them to fit their own agenda and it sounds plausible and surely you can read it right there but it's out of context nevertheless it's what they say they're capable of doing it and Senator Byrd was manipulating our Constitution to the point where the New World Order agenda took firm hold. Now we're seeing where our Constitution is just simply being eroded more and more. I'm deeply concerned for the recent events here in the state of California where the governor here, who is not an American-born citizen, is, has an enormous movement going to change the Constitution in order that he be able to run for president. This governor that you all have is, has, is a good friend of, of George Bush's and I've seen this forthcoming and have even talked about it now for um, nearly a decade 
and yet it wasn't as pertinent as, as, as it is today. Hopefully the information will um, reach people enough to where they're going to realize that as you see more and more of your state's rights eroding, it's for a specific purpose. But money, again, is ultimately at the top of all this and is dictating um, the, this New World Order agenda. There's a, a, a massive amount of, of greed that continues to um, run and permeate our society. The different criminal operations that I was forced to participate in during the Reagan-Bush administration are uh, detailed in our book, Transformation of America. That information was compiled for Congress as testimony. And um, when, upon the advice of federal attorneys, the information was released in mass in 1995. There's a number of, the, particularly then, there were a number of people in Congress who know how essential it is that good people have a knowledge base of truth and wake up and see what is going on in our country to begin to realize how this transformation of America was taking hold far more so than it ever did in Nazi Germany. Mark and I just returned from, from Europe and like, like he was saying we, we spoke in Germany and that was um, quite, a, quite an experience and to see so many people who have been affected by mind control directly who have seen it in their own families, who are acutely aware of what social engineering is in society. They know what's happening in the United States. They've been talking about it for, for years that I'm aware of, particularly on the education aspect, because it was exactly what um, Hitler had implemented, and they were recognizing it. They were also recognizing the erosion of our, our uh, medical system and how we were becoming more and more financially dependent in this state and, um, and losing more and more of, of our individual rights to information control. But the compassion of people not only in Germany but all over the world where Mark and I have been speaking out is, is very encouraging. To go outside this country it's like a whole new world. I mean it's, it's such a privilege to see that people are awake and aware. They know what mind control is. They know that mind control has a firm grip on America right now. That there is a criminal faction in control of our government that is seeking to control the world. And it's inexcusable that we continue to follow leaders that we didn't elect. We know that these people that are in place right now weren't elected. They keep taking the elections. Consider that the electronic voting machines were manufactured by a key corporation that's one of the, uh, among the very, very few that are actually controlling the media. They also manufactured our voting machines. And Dick Cheney is associated with that corporation, much the same way he is with Halliburton. I've known Dick Cheney through um, Gerald Ford since 1975. He is the most brutal person I've ever encountered personally by far. But it's his attitude and his agenda that is so frightening. Who we have in position of president is a figurehead, the spokesperson, which is why back during the Reagan-Bush administration while George Bush and Dick Cheney were running 
to sit running everything from behind the proverbial wizard's curtain or behind the scenes, then Ronald Reagan could be up front and say what they needed him to. He, he, because he's an actor, because he was an actor, he was able to do that. But he wasn't the one who was running the country, not back then. And so it has gone now through various administrations. With um, Bill Clinton, for example, which was, um, I've, I've known Bill Clinton since 1979 when he was governor of Arkansas and I knew him through some CIA black ops that were um, involved in the CIA cocaine operations going through MENA, Arkansas. But Bill Clinton was being groomed to slip into the office of president because he would do and say what needed to be done and he certainly had the ability to um, um, manipulate people with the way that he spoke and therefore it was decided in 1984 that I heard him and George Bush talking at Swiss Villa Amphitheater in, in Lampy, Missouri that when people became disillusioned with Republicans leading them into the New World Order then Bill Clinton as a Democrat would be put into place. It happened. I had also, and this was in Transformation of America, and it was released in, in 1995, that information was, that had been um, compiled. Was aware of this for, for so many years, and also that George Bush Jr. was going to be put into the office of president, not as someone who could think for himself, but as someone who would do exactly what he was told to do. George Bush Jr. can deliver a speech very well because all he has to do is voice it and mouth it exactly like he's told to do. But to ask him a question that he has to think of creatively or to, to answer on his own, he, you know, the tongue goes to the side of the mouth and he doesn't come off just very, very, very bright. That's because he's not the one who's thinking of where our country is going or where it's been. He's not the one who's aware. We got to look behind the scenes. The person that we see, the figurehead that we see as, as president is not the one that's in control. And the next one's not likely to be either. either. And I believe that's why that uh, Schwarzenegger's being groomed accordingly because he too is an actor and he can voice and say whatever he's told to do as well. This is coming unless we wake up and wise up. But according to the plans that I heard at Bohemian Grove in Northern California at the Swiss Villa Amphitheater, which is um, um, actually a CIA mind control epicenter where um, they train military special forces. Also Mount Shasta, California, where they train uh, military special forces in, with mind control, which is where I had seen um, George Bush Jr. being programmed and trained and groomed as well. Um, these, these particular um, epicenters are places where I heard numerous um, for who was going to be put into place and how the minds of the people could actually be manipulated. And I learned through that that Hillary is the next is one being groomed as well because of the, not robotically or under mind control. As a matter of fact, she is definitely more, um, more criminally intelligent than, than Bill Clinton even. But um, since people in America have been socially engineered to forget the crimes during the Clinton administration and only think of the perversion, diversion, Lewinsky affair, the um, Hillary being paraded as, as uh, an, an illusion of change as a woman is, is also um, forthcoming. So those, those are, are two very key people that are, are being maneuvered into place as well. We need to become aware of this. We need to learn to expand our thinking and realize what is going on. Because when you go outside this country, it's accepted knowledge that our president 
as under mind control. It's, it, it's accepted knowledge that Dick Cheney is very much in control and that George Bush Sr., his closest friend and comrade, has been for a long time. Those are two key people at the top of this pyramid of power that I'm aware of. And it's, it's essential that we realize they've been in power for a long, long time and it's inexcusable to leave them in anymore. It's inexcusable to keep following these leaders we didn't elect. So what can we do about it? That is very much um, a motive behind Mark and I releasing our most recent book, Access Denied for Reasons in National Security. It contains much information on healing. It includes the exact formula, step by step, of how I recovered from my extreme mind control victimization. That same recovery methodism that set me free can set everyone free to be able to break away from the um, social engineering that's been put on society to where a person can learn to expand their thinking a bit further. When, after Mark rescued my daughter and I in 1988, and he gave me a formula for deprogramming that I was able to use to deprogram myself. The first thing he did was strap a watch to my wrist and tell me to watch my watch because I needed to have an awareness of time. With an awareness of time came a conscious awareness or an ability to begin to monitor my own actions. With awareness came responsibility to um, do, to, to, to follow my, my own will. But I know from personal experience that without free thought, there's no free will. And without free will, there's no soul expression. Just like I mentioned how my spirit had taken flight to that safe, loving place that, that was just so removed while my body was tortured to carry out the will of others. I needed to have that back in order to be able to stand strong for what I believed in, to be able to implement my own free will and to be able to think for myself in order to realize what had actually been going on all those years of my life. Because when Mark rescued me in 1988, I was totally amnesic. I didn't know who I was, where I'd been. I didn't know how old I was, what year, I, what year it was, until I began remembering what had happened. And because I felt safe for the first time in my life, and because I felt love, I was having memory flashes that were just flashing on, on my mind constantly, much the same way that uh, people who are, are sexually abused oftentimes have those memories begin to break right around age 30, because our bodies have um, numerous changes that are going on at that time where the neuron pathways of the brain begin to change and memories begin to come forward. So with a combination of being safe for the first time and the combination of love and the fact that I was turning 30 and was having these memory flashes, I needed to begin to remember and piece together my own life, what had happened. What had happened was so emotionally incomprehensible that it took logic in order to begin to comprehend it. Mark handed me a pen and told me to begin to write out my memories because the very act of moving a pen uses the logic part of the brain. And by using logic, it shifted what was emotionally incomprehensible into logic where I could understand face reality and deal with what had happened. And I began to recover at a rapid rate at that point. As I gained control over my own mind again and had free thought and free will and soul expression, 
I was strongly motivated to speak out on what I had learned, not out of vengeance, not out of anything negative like that. Negativity is so immobilizing. Instead, it was love for humanity. It was love for my daughter and her need for help. It was compassion. Those were the motives for me to speak out. And yet, as soon as I had deprogrammed, I had been following orders all of my life. And to learn to think for myself beyond what I had been told was a, a, a new process. It was really difficult. And thinking was like, it was like my brain would, would fall off into a black hole. And, and I just couldn't quite get there to make a decision for myself or to think for myself. And it took brain exercises where I began to expand my thinking, to consider other angles, other possibilities, other perceptions, to look at, at other aspects in order to begin to learn the truth. And truth is so discernible because of the strength of spirit that I had regained. It's essential that we all gain our, our strength of spirit in order to be able to grasp the truth. And the same truth that made me free can make anyone free from any level of abuse and any level of misinformation, disinformation, or limited information so that we can have a firm grasp on what's really going on. With that strength, the spirit becomes um, an, a, an ability to have an inner peace. And that inner peace is essential for um, making a positive difference in our own environment and within our own self. And by having the strength of spirit and peace within, that is the first step towards world peace. How can we have world peace if we don't have any peace within? How can we know truth if we're fearful because we're, we're ignorant? We've got to be able to learn to have our strength of spirit, to trust in the power of love, to grasp the truth, and realize that indeed it is truth that makes us free. So please, I encourage each and every one of you to go out into your, your own areas of, of life and among those that you love in your own families and raise that awareness and give them that thread of truth and give it with love because love is the most powerful force in the universe and it empowers people to have the strength of spirit to stand and make a positive difference for all of us. We need it today. Thank you. Thank you.